Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Sky Factory 2.5. We're here at the Automated Manicio Farm, and I've got some progress to show. We're going to be working on a new mob farm today, so let's get started. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are at the Automated Manicio Farm that we started last week. And we left off with a few gotchas. Okay, so, uh, and I've gotten some suggestions from viewers. And so we're going to take a look here. Uh, I have gone ahead and locked these seeds in here. So that was one suggestion. So that means that we don't have to keep seeds in there. This is just going to keep kind of a ghost copy. So it knows to... Uh, it knows what to do with those. So uh, that's going to make sure that each quadrant is being planted with the Manicio seeds. And then also you can see that the Manicio essence is coming into the farm and then leaving almost immediately. All right. And uh, you, you might be wondering, how in the world are you getting that quick of progress? Well, I've done something. So I did have one of those. Uh, well, we can just take a look here. The watering can reinforced. You can't put a regular watering can in here. Uh, Bacon Donut has made it such that the autonomous activator will break the watering can. I do believe he's configured that. So you have to use one of these. So I've made the watering can, put that in the autonomous activator. And so over here, just on this side, we're getting uh, drastically increased growth rates, which is has been very useful. And you'll see why in a moment. The other thing here is that you see a an inner chest on top and it's got uh, what's the it's magenta purple magenta and what that's doing is it's filled up with all cobblestone and one imperial hoe and what we've got is an auto craft going over at the AE system or ME system and that's going to make sure to keep this filled with an imperial hoe at all times and they last for a while so it's uh, we've got a little bit of a buffer and plenty of time for it to create the new ones. So, uh, so there we go. That is working quite well. We've had plenty of Manicio. We've gone through plenty of Manicio as well, and I'll show you why right now. You can see that we've got something a little different. We've got a roof over our heads, and we've got an elevator block right here. So let's do this. Ready? Up. Yeah, I've done another layer. So we've moved over a bunch of these crops. We've got... Well, let's just do this. We can take a look in the planter and you, you can see I've moved over a bunch of the magical crops and I've filled up all of these. And so kind of like we're doing with the Manicio below, but using planters and harvesters from Mine Factory Reloaded, this is what we're doing here. And so there's a, it's not a quadrant, it's, it's like a five by five square because we're doing an overall 15 by 15. So that divides pretty evenly. We're using the silver upgrade to get the 15 by 15 radius. And then all of these crops are here. So we've got skeleton, dye, nether, earth, water, obsidian, fire, nature, and air. We can put our lily pad back there. Oh, ooh, ooh, stuck. Okay, go flying. There we go. And then on top of the harvester, we've got an ender tank. And I've got that set to the black, black, black channel. And I'll show you what we're doing with that in just a moment. But let's take a look at some other layers that I'm working on. Let's go up here. Take a look at this. We've got Ghast Crop, Glowstone, uh, Lapis Lazuli. Just finished this one up this morning. Finally got enough Ghast Seeds to be able to fill that up. But we're doing another layer. A lot of different seeds in this one because yeah, we, we don't need a full layer dedicated to any of these. And it's going it's going all right. Let's go to the next layer. Let's go up here. This is the diamond layer. And I've put these signs here to remind me what to do because I've got a lot of stuff going on so I can lose track. And what I've got under here, uh, do I have? Yeah, I've got a matic and the matic has been very useful. But you can see right here, I've got growth pulsers under this entire thing except for the water blocks. So our diamond crop is growing quite well quite well indeed we can just put this back stone matic the thing you can see the stone matic's actually been doing pretty good i did throw a diamond on there as one of the modifiers but just with using the iguanas tweaks and increasing the uh, you know the overall use we've done pretty well 
So not, not too shabby. So that's the diamond layer. I'm still filling out the diamonds, but I ran out of Zavisio Essence and I ran out of Manisio Essence getting the growth pulsers going for this layer and starting the growth pulsers for this layer. Yeah, I ran out right about there. This is the redstone layer. We need a lot of redstone in the various things that are upcoming. And so I'm dedicating an entire floor to redstone crop. So there we go. That's that's getting filled up up here. Nether quartz, we're going to do the same thing. A single floor with growth pulsers. It's going to take a while up here. Fluix, same thing. Up here is going to be a mix. You can see right there, we're going to be putting uh, growth pulsers under the wither skeleton and yellorium. Everything else, not so much. Up here, we're going back to standard stuff, not, not magical crops. We're going to be using or doing wheat, carrots, and potatoes there. Up here, hemp, netherwort, ender lily. Uh, there we go. You can see melon, pumpkin, reed, cactus, and then ore berries. Right now, it's not a dark room. I'm going to get some darkened glass and put around the edge there. And then up here is going to be trees. So we've got our farm complex well underway. It's going to take a little bit of time. I'm doing most of that off camera because I've done this stuff on camera before in my previous modded series. So I figured, you know, we can, we can kind of skip some of that. But you can see the progress going there. It's going to take a while because... Uh, we got a lot of Manicio that we need to get. And so I've just been going AFK and letting it run. For now, oh, we've, we've managed to make back. We were down to almost zero, and now we've got 8,000. So not too shabby. We take a look over here. I've got this kind of off the beaten path. And we've got a sludge boiler, and that's connected to the ender tank. And uh, yeah, so the reason why we do that over here is because it tends to give out a poison effect if you're in the area. I don't want that, so we'll leave that over there and burn, burn the sludge. And that's just making some useful items. Not, not a lot, but it, it gives us something. At least uh, we're not throwing it away anymore. But for now, um, what do we need to do? Well, we need to work on a new mob farm. I've got to figure out where we're going to do it. You can see that it's missing. I went and did a vein miner on the thing and that worked out for the most part but then I hit cobblestone and I use cobblestone everywhere around here and so I, I was watching uh, another channel do sky factory and they said you know the rite of passage with vein miner is to accidentally ruin your entire base well I did that so I have I have passed the test I've done my initial vein miner uh, killing the base thing so um, yeah anyway I've cleared out the mob farm the old one we're going to be switching to let me show you the materials we've got we're gonna be switching to a cursed earth mob farm that's going to provide a lot more drops we're going to be using a bunch of fans and that's going to make the thing really efficient we'll start getting more Manicio and among other things but mainly I want the Manicio and I want the uh, these loot bags I've got this automatically processing now so no more throwing away extras like voiding it out it's gonna be exported from the ME system go into here go into this compactor and then we'll eventually start getting automated uh, what are they epic loot bags I guess anyway let me go collect some more materials and find the spot where we're gonna put this new mob farm and then we will get that going all right all right I think I've got everything I need but I just want to show you this we've got diamond essence coming in like crazy over here so we can just do this throw that in there we go a stack and a little bit of diamonds just in that short little time what is that 200 282 so not too shabby and done some more updates but we aren't concerned about that for the time being we're going to go over here and we're going to go down as low as we can go here in the world Kind of like we did with the farming stations over there. Let's see. We've got our angel block here. Let's grab that. Where are we right now? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, two. Let's see if we can put that there. And is that the lowest we can go? How about placing right here? Nope. Okay. So the lowest that we can go is right here. And that's where we want to start this whole thing all right so we'll put some light down we can get our angel block back and what we're going to do is put a little travel anchor 
Uh, let's see. We got plenty of room to the back. So we're going to put the travel anchor right there. And then we'll see if we can set that. We're going to say mobs. And I think that's good. That's all we got to do. And then we'll just surround that. Ooh, ooh, lag spike. And we'll go like so. All right. The way we're going to be doing the mob collection here is we're going to use diamond spikes. I've used those in a past series. And we're going to upgrade these later to get mob souls. Because I managed to pick up a Reaper 1 book. So I think next episode we're going to work on duplicating books. But for now we've got to do this. What I'm going to get is the vacuum hopper. We're going to put that maybe right on top of that torch. And then to one side we're going to put our ender chest. Like that. And then to the other side we're going to put an experience obelisk. That's one of the, the finer points of diamond spikes instead of iron spikes. Is that we can collect experience and we're going to get some better drops out of this thing. So we just have to configure the, uh, what is this? Oh, any eye you are in the way. Let's hide any eye for now. Okay. Can we click right here? Did that do it? No. Wrong one. This one. Okay. That interface is not the easiest to use. We'll go over here and say items. No items here. And that should be good. All right, then what we need to do is we're going to build up just a little bit, not a lot, because, um, you know, we're, we're going to be killing these things with the diamond spikes, and that takes care of business pretty quickly. So we can just do something like this, maybe under, under each of those. Okay, like that. And we'll surround the thing. And there we go. And then we can use our, uh, we're going to use the builder's wand here. And go up. Hmm. Oh, it's not, it's not covering these. So let's just go in like so. Okay. And we'll make sure to put a torch here for now. Uh, right there. Okay. That should be good. We want a decent height so they get a little bit of fall damage and then hit those spikes, but the spikes will take pretty quick work of, or uh, pretty quick work of them. But I think, I think that's probably a good spot. Let's see, how many do we have? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Maybe we we'll go a couple more just for good measure, and then from here, what we're going to do is come out six on each side with dirt uh, not six we're gonna have oh I should have put the dirt uh, in or on top of this one so let's let's dig this out all right pick this one yeah we want as much as much area as possible converted into this cursed earth so that we can get as many mobs as possible on this whole thing. And the most that we're going to be able to do is six. So we got what, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I think that's how far a fan can go. And then we'll go like this all the way around. So let me take care of filling out this dirt platform and then I'll bring you back in just a bit. All right, the next order of business is making sure that we can turn this thing on and off. So we're going to just try something here. Let's grab a lever and we'll see how much that lights up. Okay, that's good. So that's what, one, two, out, out. Yeah, so here and we'll do another one here. And what we're going to use is the insulated redstone cables from Ender.io to turn this on and off from outside the farm. But for now, I need to test just to make sure we're covering the entire thing. And in case you didn't know, um, if light is on the cursed earth, that's going to turn off the whole farm. So th this is going to be a way for us to get in and do maintenance. Okay, so it won't quite reach out there. Maybe I need to go one further would that be sufficient 
let's try that grab that okay yeah so so we'll have to do that let me finish getting all of the lights in place and then we'll work on covering the whole system up all right there you have it we've got some redstone conduit in place we've got a lever right there and so that can turn on all of those lights we'll work on the mechanics for that and the fans a little bit later so let's get the let's actually get those fans in place and that's going to involve just covering up with some more of this cobblestone like so and then we're going to make a box that's going to leave a too high gap we don't need endermen anymore we've got plenty of endermen essence coming in to the system from the farm over there and it's not very long before we go to the end and we can make a cursed earth farm over there as well and that's going to be a lot more efficient than an overworld enderman farm so i'm just going to do two high mobs for now and if we end up needing more endermen we can always raise the roof so let me finish this up oh it looks like i've run out of some cobble we'll go grab some more materials but we'll get that box done and i'll bring you back in just a little bit all right well now comes the fun part in trying to figure out these fans you can arrange them just based on how you're looking when you place them and so what I've got to do is make sure that they are all pointing into this central area right here we're not going to need one over in the corners here so maybe we'll just block that off to make sure that I don't have to think about that and we'll make sure to do that as well and what we're going to do is once we get all the fans in I'm going to bring all of this uh, this what uh, cobblestone detail over the fans and so we shouldn't have any issues with mobs walking in on top of them of course you never know you never know but uh, for sure I want to make sure or for sure I want to make sure for sure what I want to do is make sure that these fans right here in the center are in fact pointing to the center it looks like they've got a wide degree of rotation huh Anyway, so this is going to take me a little bit of time to figure out. So let me take care of that off camera and I'll bring you back once we've got all the fans in place. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we have found a slime chunk. I just came down here and saw a little baby slime jumping around. So we're going to have to put slabs down instead of just lighting this thing up. Anyway, our job now is to take a look at what we've got in the box here you can see I've put a little design on it and I took care of the fans so let me show you those real quick we'll just drop into here and hopefully not fall onto the spikes okay there we go all right so you can see that I've got the fans all pointed roughly towards the center and then what I've done let's go see if we can find the center again okay and then we'll go down here and you can see that I've got some conduit hanging out. And what this is is insulated redstone conduit. And I've gone through on each of these. And I, since regular stone is not a redstone enabled block, I had to hit this with the wrench. What's the name of that wrench? I think it's just crescent wrench. Anyway, there's a few different types. Yeah, crescent, oh, crescent hammer, not a wrench, sorry. And so what I've done is I've set all of the fans to the red frequency and then all of the lights to the green frequency. So we can control those with two separate levers right here. I've got the lights on. And if we come down here, we can turn this. You see the lights go off, but the fans do not turn on. I, don't, I can't really prove that to you without going into the system. But right there, the fans are on. Let's see if we can get into there. I'll probably knock out a couple extra. Yeah, you can see I'm getting pushed towards the center. And that's a good thing. Okay, so you can see I'm all spinning now. And it keeps me roughly in the center of the farm. But that means that it's now time for the ultimate test. And I need to go through and change some of these bits of dirt into cursed earth and so what we're gonna do is grab that we're not going to use all the pieces of it we do need to keep some for the enderman farm but in darkness cursed earth will spread um, 
we need to turn off the fans right now. You can see we got a little problem when we do that. So cursed, cursed earth will spread with darkness. So what we're going to do... Oh, you can hear the, the dark sound there. Let's grab... Where did I put my shovel? I think maybe I put my shovel here. Yeah, there we go. And we'll just do that. Maybe a couple others right here. And then, and then we'll just wait for this to spread. And we should have our Cursed Earth mob farm going. No problem. Then again, the best that we can really determine is just looking at the drops as they start coming in. Eventually, it should... Yep, there we go. So we're starting to get more. So what we're going to do is turn on the fans now. And we'll get that going. There we go. So we've got we got stuff coming in. And since we've got the experience obelisk right there, we're going to start getting experience in there. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to build this type of farm, especially with the diamond spikes. So it's going to be really helpful. But now we just have to watch... The input so let me grab the staff of traveling and this is something I've done off camera I forgot to really point that out but I've done travel anchors it's from Ender IO so it gives you a quick way of just teleporting around and then I've also set up a oh, one of these wireless chargers you see that right there so that's gonna keep my uh, what is it my magnet charged and the staff of traveling charged. Anything that takes an RF signal, it's going to keep it charged. But for now, what we need to do is just throw this back in the system. Maybe throw that back in the system. And I've got a little bit of cleanup to do down there. I've got to use the painter machine and paint some conduit facade. Just clean this up. But I will do that between now and next time because we've run out of time for today. So hopefully you have enjoyed. If you did, a like is always appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, think about subscribing so that you're up to date with everything going on on the channel. But that's going to be it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.